Good day, culinarians. Today we're going to be making roux. Okay, I'm going to show you different uh, forms of roux here, uh, different colors of roux. We're going to start out with the white roux, then go to blonde roux, and then go to dark roux. The reason why I'm showing you how to do the roux is because um, you're going to have to learn how to make a roux when we get into making your bechamel sauce. And the bechamel sauce we're going to turn into an Alfredo sauce, and that Alfredo sauce we're going to turn into the shrimp mac and cheese. So for the first step, you're going to have to know how to make a roux. So we're going to do a blonde roux here first. Remember, after reading the chapter, whenever you make roux, it's equal parts by weight. Now remember that, equal parts by weight of fat and flour. So the fat today we're using is regular canola oil. So what I'm going to do, and the flour is all-purpose flour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh everything out got my uh, container here that I'm going to use. I'll put it on my scale. I zeroed out the scale. Um, I'm going to start out with the flour. Now, I'm going to make uh, eight ounces of roux. So to make eight ounces of roux, I'm going to put in here four ounces of all-purpose flour. So I got four ounces of all-purpose flour going in here. And I'm going to put four ounces of the oil in here. I'm going to mix this all up together. I'm using a wooden spoon. Because a lot of times if you go to make your roux and you don't have a, a stainless steel pan like I do, if you have a regular uh, saute pan, the aluminum saute pan, if you use a whisk, a lot of times that roux will end up turning gray from you just whisking it. So what I'm doing is I'm using the wooden spoon and for me to cook, I love to cook with a wooden spoon anyway. It's a little bit more versatile to use. So with the wooden spoon, I'm mixing it all up really good. Now when you start cooking the roux, give it a smell. As the roux starts cooking, you're going to start smelling this nuttiness. Okay? It's going to be very light at the beginning. So I got this roux mixed. It's cooked. So now I have a nice, nice white roux. I'm going to leave this on here. Keep it cooking. The color's going to start changing on you. And then the smell, you're going to start smelling more of that nuttiness. So when it goes from that white roux to that blonde roux, I'm going to start smelling more of that nuttiness. Oh, there you go. Can you smell that? Really smell the nuttiness coming out. So if you're making this, you start smelling that nuttiness coming out of the roux, you're doing a good job. Now keep in mind, when you're making roux, make it a white roux and a blonde roux, you go to thicken your product with it. So when we're making our bechamel sauce, since it's a white sauce, we want to make sure we use a white or blonde roux when we're making the uh, uh, bechamel sauce. Is if it goes too dark, then I'm making the bechamel sauce a little bit too dark. The dark roux, you're going to make, uh, you're going to use those if you're making a beef, uh, beef sauce. You know, if we're going to throw some beef stock in here, you know, it's okay to have a nice dark roux. And then when you start getting into, uh, there we go, now we've got a good blonde roux going on. Now be careful because this stuff is just going to start changing very quickly. So we went from the white room to the quad room. I can really smell the nuttiness coming out. Now after I got the blonde room done, I'm going to go right up into a dark room or a dark brown room. Some people call it a red room. Keep in mind, when you make the room, the darker it gets, the less, the less thick it will do on your product. So that's why when you ever make a really dark roux, 
uh, would get into really dark brown or red roux, and you start using that for your uh, uh, Louisiana style cooking. If you're making an etouffee or gumbo, you want that really dark, rich roux because you want that flavor coming from that roux. Roux has a lot of great flavor to it, but it won't tighten up as much, so you've got to put a little bit more in there. So when you're making your etouffees or your uh, jump, uh, your uh, Gumbos, you want that dark, nice, dark, rich roux, not only to tighten up your product, but to give it some flavor. So now we've got a really good dark roux coming on here. See how it's getting nice and dark? Oh, it's beautiful. I can really smell that nuttiness now. Can you smell that coming out? You guys are doing this along with me. You can really start smelling that nuttiness. This beautiful flavor coming out. So I got this coming up. Now I got a nice, dark roux. Now with roux, you can make these ahead of time, especially if you use them and they're oil-based. A lot of times what we did in the restaurant was we'll make a huge batch of roux and just slide it underneath the prep table, let it set under there. And then whenever we needed some, we just take a chunk of roux out and then uh, we use it. That's if it's oil-based. If it's butter-based, you don't want to keep it sit out in the kitchen all day. There we go. That's a nice dark roux. And get that final smell. Oh boy, that smells good. It smells really good. Got a really good roux right here. I think maybe uh, maybe after I do this video, I'm gonna make a little bit of gumbo or etouffee uh, for lunch. So enjoy.